Tonight on Missing Persons Unit... He's gone again. 14-year-old missing schoolboy Gavin came home, but not for long. He wanted money all the time. So now, Mandy's back on the trail again. And the desert search for David Hawes. I haven't come across anything sort of dramatic at this stage. Three weeks in the bush and still no sign of him. I hope they do find him alive. And then we Plus, have after a fight over a mobile phone... Normally we always have sister fights. Yeah, yeah. as you do. Well, yeah, we all do. Jackie's twin sister, Julie, vanishes without a word. Someone kidnapped her or something happened? Yeah. Monday morning at the missing persons briefing. All right, let's rip in. And today, there are 30 new cases to solve. A 41 year old male is. Sergeant Mark Samways gets the urgent case of David Hawes, who disappeared from Broken Hill three weeks ago without a trace. He's rung every family member and no one's, no one's heard from him. Got twin sisters and I've had a um, domestic last night and one's walked out after the, uh, after the argument. And Constable Diana Cassie is assigned the case of 22-year-old twin Julie Lee, now missing for two days. So we might need to get in contact with the um, person reporting to see if she's actually returned. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, any problems, come and see me. Last week, Police investigated the disappearance of a 14-year-old, Gavin, missing for three days. Looking for this fellow has gone missing. Senior Constable Mandy Gale began her search for the runaway schoolboy. This young fellow has been reported as a missing person last week. At home, his grieving mum, Matilda, waited by the phone. I'm doing the right thing for him. He's only 14. He's got a long way to go. But the search turns up nothing. Gavin is nowhere to be found. Hello, Matilda. It's Senior Constable Gale calling for However, a new here. morning brings some good news. And noticed that Gavin came home. But not for long. He did. He came home on Friday and now he's gone again. He's gone again? Yes, he is. Okay, we'll be around shortly and I'll bring your photo back and um, no I'll talk worries. to you then. Yep. Uh, okay, uh, thanks, yeah. Matilda. Uh, Bye. I think. Back to square one. <laughs> also today, the new case of 41-year-old Broken Hill man David Hawes, missing for three weeks, is now hotting up. Look, before we go any further... I'd Steve Jeffries begins the hunt by calling David's mum. We've got no idea where he might have headed for. No, well, this is it. We're a very close family, yeah. and if he wasn't around Judy's, he'd be here. David, who's one of 13 children, has been depressed since recently being laid off from work. I don't know whether he's got any friends. Look, how's his sta state of mind? Is he, was he all right? Well, he, was, he was really down because they'd put him off work and, uh, and he had a few debts. How are you bearing up, Patricia, or how's, how's your... Obviously, Steve is worried about David. I'm a very strong woman. I'll but right now, he's just as concerned about David's mum, Patricia. I haven't broke down yet, but I think I'm beginning to get to the end of me tether. There is a possibility that he may have, um, may have uh, taken something into his own hands or done something. But uh, there's no evidence to suggest this at this stage, and uh, it's a bit of a mystery, but it's out of character, and um, obviously the family have concerns. Back on the streets, Mandy begins yet another search for 14-year-old Gavin. This is the third time in as many weeks, I think, that Gavin's been missing. So each time he's been located at the skate park, so I'm trying to establish that with his mum, if that's exactly where he was found the last time. Mandy's first job is to re-interview Gavin's mum in the hope Hello. of uncovering a fresh lead. By now, for Matilda, there are no more tears. And like any mum, she's becoming more and more fed up with Gavin's running away. He came home and he slept all day the next day and I said, oh, what's wrong with you? What happened, you know? Are you sick? What, you know, what do you want? And he said, it's just too boring, you know? He's better out there than in here. When Gavin one did come home for a few day. hours, he only wanted one thing. He wanted money all the time, and I'm like, you know, there's better thing to do with money than giving it to him and spend it out there. That's not right. He's been drinking out there 
thinking it's funny what they're doing, you know, that when he goes out, he comes back and like he tells me like stuff that he's done. I think it's like, oh, he thinks it's good what he's doing, but really it's not. His uncle Edward knows exactly how he would deal with him. If we we're back in the islands, he would have got a hiding already, but <laughs> it can't happen here, so yeah, I don't know what to do with Inspector Adam Taylor and Sergeant Mark Samways leave for Broken Hill to pick up the trail of David Hawes. We don't know a lot about David's state of mind at the time of him going missing. The evidence that we have provides two real possibilities. One, that he's managed to find a lift somewhere along the Mildura Road. Or two, that he remains somewhere out there in the bush. I've been advised that Mum's finding it very hard to deal with the situation as any mother would and um, hopefully when we meet with her we can offer her some answers and that's ultimately why we're heading to Broken Hill to solve this case, to hopefully find David and to ease the anguish Mum's suffering. I mean hopefully we will find uh, David alive. The brutal reality of it all is that if he is out here um, in the bush and gone wandering uh, we may well be uh, looking for, for remains. But when they arrive at the search site, they're confronted with some tragic news. OK, Adam, we've just received some unfortunate news. The mother of uh, the missing person has passed away. Oh, no. Uh, we're, not, we're not exactly sure. It, um, it's obviously directly related to the, to the missing person, but um, unfortunately, at this stage, um, we're just uh, conducting some inquiries with the family. And, uh, That's devastating for the family. It seems David's mum, Patricia, simply couldn't bear the pain anymore. She died from a heart attack. My son was at a mate's place across the road from mum's and he, he rung me and said to go over to mum's because the ambulances were there. But by the time I got there, I think mum was, um, she didn't know much. But I think mum just had enough. It's really hard. I didn't get to say goodbye. Is Jackie there, please? Back at the missing persons unit, Constable Diana Cassie begins her search for missing twin Julie Lee. Hello, Jackie. Yeah? It's Constable Diana Cassie from the New South Wales Police Missing Persons Unit. How are you going? 22 year old Julie disappeared three days ago after a run in with her sister, Jackie. Um, because you don't mind me coming by and picking up a photo of her so we can start media publicity. What time are you going to come and pick up the photo? Um, probably within the next hour, is that all right? Yeah. So, bye-bye. Uh, this is the first time that Julie's gone missing. She basically just said they had a verbal argument, it was nothing serious, and she hasn't been in contact, hasn't returned home within two days. Meanwhile, back at search headquarters outside Broken Hill... Our missing person is David Andrew Hawes. Police and state emergency Hawes. services volunteers gather last for a briefing. Seen approximately 15 kilometres southwest from here, along the power line, that he was walking towards town. David's brother, Robert, has now joined the search. His hope is that David has just walked off and is wandering out here somewhere. David's, he's always been a learner. He's, uh, he's more or less kept to himself uh, ever since uh, he's been a young, young fellow. He walks for miles, I know that. That's all he used to do, he just walk and walk and walk. Then, mate. He's probably got about 100, 130 metres to the fence line, mate. No worries, mate. But surrounded by thousands of kilometres of unforgiving desert, the chances of finding him are not good. And the unanswered question still remains. Why did David disappear? He did owe quite a substantial amount of money. Yeah, I think he couldn't cope. And, yeah, he just walked off. Domestic arguments account for 50% of the missing persons unit workload. The twins have just come up from Victoria and uh, Jackie and Julie have had a falling out together. So we're just going to go around and speak to the, her twin sister, Jackie, the person reporting, and see how, see how she is and if she's heard anything. 
When they arrive at the Lee home, Jackie has some news that police were not expecting. Um, yeah, Julia just, just called me right now. Julia just called me right now. Oh, did she? Yeah, she just called me right now on my mobile phone, and I was like thinking, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. So, can, do you mind if we come in? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, what, what did she sound? Um, she said, can you call her back on this number? Because oh, she okay. can't talk long. Did yeah. she sound okay, or...? She, um, she sounded... I think it's because of the... Maybe the fight that we had. But I thought that was nothing, because normally we always have sister fights. Yeah, and yeah. As you do. We, yeah, we all do. <laughs> and then, another anxious moment, as the phone rings again. Yeah, where are you? Can you tell me where you are? Because I have to see that you're all right. Me and my sister I used to fight with all the time. I fight with my sister all the time. They just time. want to meet you and they just want to see that you're all right, please. It is Julie. Yes, please. And with Julie still on the line, Diana knows it's a critical time. She has to first find out where Julie is and then convince her to stay put. You're not in any trouble. All we've got to do, we've got to physically cite you to make sure that you're safe and well. We all have fights. I mean, I have fights with my sister, so it's, it's not unusual at all. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, your sister's really worried and she's very upset and she's happy that you finally called her. And we just want to see you, make sure you're safe and well and, you know, your sister wants you back home. Meanwhile, in Broken Hill, it is stinking hot. After six hours of searching an area where David was last thought to have been seen, there is still no sign of him. I'm just looking for a backpack. David normally carries a backpack, black. Uh, uh, looking for any footprints. Basically just walking along looking to see what we can find. While the line search fans out further across the desert, Paul Air prepares for a sweep from the air. Up here following the power lines. Yep. Disorientated uh, in the dark because when he was seen 20 odd kilometres out, it was just on dusk. As temperatures on the ground soar well into the 40s, it's not looking so hot from above. If after three weeks David is somehow still alive out here, then he's in serious trouble. Back in Sydney, Diana's negotiation skills have convinced okay, missing Diana. sister Julie hey, Lee to come home. Are you OK? Have you yes. been around the last couple of days? Um, yeah. Yeah, we just had a little fight, yeah. Do you realise how worried she was? Yeah, everyone knows, because Paul, he was worrying me, so I was like, oh my goodness. Julie's OK, but embarrassed that the police are involved. Yesterday so I, I came down here looking and asking everyone, oh, have you seen someone that looks like me? Are you planning on going back with your sister? Yeah, definitely. I'm Thank glad you. everything turned out. For police, yeah. it's been a lot of work Bye. over something pretty trivial. Yeah, well, it's a lot of trouble over a phone. But, <laughs> trivial or not, the missing persons unit don't have the luxury to pick and choose which cases they follow. Back in Broken Hill, a local farmer has come forward claiming he saw David Hawes only a few days ago. So, acting on this information, Paul the Tracker has found some footprints. Missing person David had been spoken to by the uh, grazier that owns this property and that he was travelling from that way up towards Broken Hill following the power lines. So, well, you can tell he's travelling towards Broken Hill through the uh, way the indentation's heavy at the front of the toe. Yep. Where he's been walking, the toe usually digs in and drags back. He could have covered that 10 k's oh, after yeah. dusk quite easily. Quite easily. But again, dehydration in this area doesn't take long to set on. The, no, the middle of February is still a fairly hot day. There's no time to lose. Police race off in the direction of the footprints. Oh, well, it's hard. It's, you know, it's an arid, hard country. Um, two weeks out here in the heat. Um, you know, if he is out there in the bush, anything could have happened. If, you know, snake bite, he could have been injured. Um, anything could have happened. So uh, if he is out here, uh, things don't look, uh, look too good for David. Back on the search for 14-year-old Gavin, Mandy has one last idea. We're now off to Asheville to have a look at the skate parks in Asheville. We know he goes there, he hangs around the skateboard rinks. We're from the Missing Persons Unit. Yeah. We're looking for a boy by the name of Gavin. 
He's been missing for a few days and we know he comes down here a lot. I've seen him here. You've seen him here? Yeah. yeah. Do you know, has he been here? Mandy's hunch was right. Uh, Gavin hey. has been here. Okay, if you see him hanging around, can you tell him to make sure he gets in touch with his mum? All right. Okay. Can, yeah. can you, you go show us what you do? Oh, I can't do much. Oh, show us the style. And, and just as she's about to leave, she spots someone who's the spitting image of Gavin. In Broken Hill, Mark Samways has arrived at David Hawes's home to take DNA samples. In the, in the unfortunate event that um, David's body, body's found out in the bush somewhere, we need to um, positively identify him. Would there be any bottles that he's drunk out of? <laughs> Only David's personal items will hold the vital DNA clues and fingerprints that will help police if they ever have to identify his remains. So all his possessions that he'd be touching are in his bedroom. Thanks. That's how good. Yeah, what we're looking for are items that are unique to the missing person and not items that are shared amongst family members and that. After three days, Mandy has at last found Gavin and tries to talk some sense into this restless teenager. I've spoken to your mum so many times and she's an excellent lady. And your uncle, they're so nice. All you got to do, and I know you're not really listening to me because you're not watching me. Okay? But Gavin's not Just interested. Do the right thing by your mum. Because you are 14, you're under the legal age. So Darren lays out the hard, cold facts. The police station and yeah. the Department of Community Services involved. So the better option for us is to take you home now, all right? Right now. Yeah. Matilda, this time I've got good news. I've got Gavin with me. And we'll be hand-delivering him to you shortly. After hours of DNA collection, the final piece of the puzzle... It's kind of like a paddle pop stick. ..a mouth swab um, is collected from David's you. family. Just put it inside your mouth. We need to get as many cells as we possibly can on this. I lie awake thinking about him too. Even though things are not looking good, his sister Judy refuses to give up hope. David, if you are out there and listening to this, could you please ring either me or Meredith? and let us know you're OK. We just want you home, safe, well, and just please come home. Back in Broken Hill, it's all systems go. There's been another sighting of David Hawes. Time is critical, so volunteers quickly begin searching the new area where David was spotted 15 kilometres outside town. I thought, well, maybe he's alive somewhere out there and just doesn't know who he is. I hope they do find him alive, but my feelings, I don't think they will. Mm. Meanwhile, Matilda is now waiting for police to bring her son, Gavin, home. Oh, my God. Recognise this guy? He's a nice boy, he's a good kid. Isn't he? And five days on the street have certainly taken their toll on this teenager. I didn't run away. Then why you didn't contact me? Why you didn't. I couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? Huh? Matilda tries to find out why he left, but Gavin is too upset to talk. I cannot tell what you want. Yeah? And Mandy has something she wants to say too. Yeah, kids, you've got to set an example to your brothers and sisters, you know, because if they see you doing that, they're going to think it's okay when they're old enough that they can do that. So you've got to show these guys that you can be responsible and do the right thing and go to school. I think you've got a great home. You remember what we talked about in the car, okay? He's a, he's a good boy and... A sad scene to a happy end in Mandy's six-day search for Gavin. For now, it's case closed.
After 12 long hours scouring the desert, the searchers come up empty-handed again. The SES and uh, police have searched uh, in a vast area today. We've done about 150 metres from either side of the road um, until our second last grid on the way up. And if he's walking out this way, it's a fair hike. Virtually like a desert once you get past this creek. And once you get about 100 k's out, then it goes in the thicker scrub again. Whether he's uh, wandered off off the road um, into the, the vast expanses here and uh, met with some sort of grief, it's just uh, one of those mysteries at the moment. He could have been sighted back there and he's bummed a ride to Majura and well, could be anywhere now. Yeah, yeah. It's could be hope. sitting in Melbourne or something. Yeah. As volunteers and police call it a day, their best hope is that David's caught a road train heading south. Every year, over 30,000 people go missing. Have you seen 13-year-old Prue Bird missing from Glenroy, Victoria, in 1992? 23-year-old Christian Fogarty disappeared from Newman, WA, in 2002. Or 16-year-old Ronya Lavoni, last seen in Moyle, Northern Territory, in 1980. If you have any information, please call 1-800-333-000.